Welcome everyone to the Patron Leader Institute. Uh, my name is Gil Fried, the Crowd Management Doctor, and these are all videos being produced by the University of West Florida. I hope you enjoy it, but most importantly, I hope you learn how to do your job more effectively. Module 12 deals with getting people into the facility. So we're gonna have different modules on getting people in the facility, managing them when they're in the facility, and then helping them get out of a facility. One of your primary concerns is getting people into a facility. By knowing how people enter a facility and what can go wrong, you can help alleviate some of those concerns. So let's cover a couple key terms from this module. Density, it refers to the number of people in a given space. If people are like sardines, that's very dense. Flow refers to the number of people that pass a given reference point in a given time frame. So you can take a look at if there's free flow where there's no obstruction, people can move through pretty quickly. General admission seating. That, it's often called GA seating as well. That's when patrons are allowed to sit wherever they want and are not assigned a specific seat. So they might want to go and bring their picnic baskets or their blankets and sit in different areas or they might want to be right at the front row at a concert. A queue is a line. Speed, it refers to the distance covered by moving people in a given unit of time. There's a the science to it and how fast people move, but think of it like cars driving on a freeway. Let's start off with entry management as the first part of this mo module. So the goal is to know how lines move and what impedes that process. So our goal here is to identify several ways lines can move and several issues that can impede a line. So what can cause a problem with patrons entering a facility or event? All sorts of different things. It could be traffic, it could be people are upset, they could have gotten in a fight, it could be congestion, it could be a stampede. All right, it could be whatever. In what ways can patrons move? It's like a song. They go up, down, side, side, left, right, fast, slow, all sorts of different ways people can move. Some of the ways patron movement can be hampered though include traffic, trash, congestion, that could be people or equipment blocking the way. Other patrons are trying to decide where to go or are lost, so looking around, trying to figure out the signage. Uh, other patrons waiting for family members. Think about like outside of a restroom and they start congregating, you have a whole family there, that could block the concourse way. Weather, whether it's snow, ice, or rain, that can impact people. The type of surface they're walking on, whether there are bumps or height differences, so people walk slower on stairs, especially going up compared to going down. Are there any gates or doors being closed? Are there kids? or elderly present. How about disabled patrons? That can all impact people's movement. How about poor communication? What about medical emergencies? These are all things that can impact people. So an educated, informed, and relaxed patron will probably be better and less stressed, and that's gonna present hopefully a better opportunity to get them in a safe manner. There are three basic movement characteristics though. Density, speed, and flow. Again, Density refers to number of people in a given space of walkway, X ways, whatever it might be. Speed refers to the distance covered by moving people in a given unit of time. And flow refers to the number of people that pass a given reference point a given time frame. These elements are impacted by the width of the area where the patrons are moving. So if it's a very narrow area, you're gonna have more density, slower flow, and the speed's gonna be impacted. These elements come together in a formula for determining how quickly people can enter or exit a facility. And that is flow equals speed times density times width. The greater the speed, the more people or the smaller the area they are in, all impact the flow. The next element uh, of this module deals with screening because that affects people coming into a venue. That slows people down, right? Screening is a controversial tactic, but a necessary tactic in many facilities, even where there are, uh, you know, little that you could think of someone bringing to the facility. But we have to do it because people can bring in instruments or devices into a facility, and that's a major risk because of the risk of attack. So this was something that we didn't think about years ago, and now we are concerned about it. You should not touch someone without their consent and the patron should be asked if it's all right to search them in a given location. If a patron objects to being searched, contact a supervisor. You don't have to let them in. You can have a supervisor deal with it though. 
Part of the screening process entails using technology that could be metal scanners, wands, pre-cleared ticket holders, and possible facial recognition software where they're looking at your eyes. Uh, or it could be other areas as well. Those are all techniques that are uh, undertaken to try to make it easier for people to move in and that they're quicker because they've been pre-screened. So the goal is to identify several things that you should not do while searching and several things normally not permitted into a venue. So the types of inspections include the following. Manual, visual, and pat down. So manual is, you know, manual inspection. Visual is just the eyes, and a pat down is where you physically touch the body. You should never do any of the following. Put your hands on patrons, unless pat down searches are being conducted. If it's just visual inspection, you shouldn't be putting your hands on people. You should not order patrons around or chastise them without a valid reason. Never put hands into a purse or bag. Never grope a patron. Never take a patron's item. Ask them to hand it to you. Never agree to hold an item for a patron. And never play with patron's property. Those are just never. Just don't do it during this process. The following is a list of possible prohibitive items. This is just possible. You could have at your venue their own rules and regulations of what might not be allowed. But let's just go over some of them. Weapons, whether it's guns, knives. I've seen belts used as weapons. I've seen chains used as weapons. Alcohol and drugs, bottles, cans, fruit, and other projectiles that could be thrown. Wooden signs or signs on poles. Signs could be taken off and it could be used to hit people. Maybe cameras or tape recorders, ice chests, chains, seat cushions, umbrellas, large signs, strollers. Maybe you don't allow that at certain venues because where are you going to store them? It could be an issue uh, with blocking aisleways. Maybe megaphones, maybe noisemakers. Every venue is going to be different, and those are things that you have to make sure you understand what is allowed and what is not allowed if you're involved in the search process. It's not only in the search process, though, because it could be that someone snuck something in, you have to be able to find it and be able to address it. If you see someone sneaking in with a flask and it's shaped like binoculars and they're using the binoculars this way, then you know there is a problem. When you're searching a patron, pay special attention to the waist area. Also, the pant legs and the ankle area, especially boots and shoe tops. You also want to look for any pockets with bulges and keychains. Ask patrons to remove their hat and to unzip or unbutton their jackets to make sure nothing is hidden. To pat down a coat or sweater, you can ask for the patron to remove the garment and hold it away from their body so you can actually check the pockets. If a patron is on the phone, Ask them to hang up before conducting a search. The key is not necessarily the search, but how they act and behave. You can learn a lot from a patron by their actions, and that is why it's so important to focus on patron behavior and actions. You know, if they're reluctant, maybe they're trying to hide something. Some steps you can take to reduce the risk of crowd-related concerns at an entrance include the following. Inspecting the area to remove any tripping or slipping hazards. Also monitor the parking lot area because if there's any concerns in the, mar in the parking lot, that could cause more anxiety for people when they're coming into the venue. Also making entrance screening areas far enough apart to avoid congestion. If you have one area that's ticketing, one area that's screening, and then you can actually go in, that's okay. But if they're very close to each other, it's going to cause congestion. Moving patrons quickly from the entrance area to avoid congestion. Getting your smile and attitude ready to try and create a joyful and fun mood. Welcome! We're glad you're here. Using various aisleways and barricades to break the crowd into smaller groups. That makes it easier. Creating small funnel areas so the crowd narrows as it is easier to manage a smaller crowd compared to a wide crowd. And maybe quickly screening patrons and telling them where to go. Oh, okay, this is your ticket, you're going to go there. And then instead of people waiting to figure out where they're going to go, they know exactly where to go. You should always help a patron to their seat. Is that a yes or no? It depends upon your role and what you're asked to do. It might not necessarily be the case, so it might be that you're going to be telling people, I can't help you, but this person can. The next focus of this module is moving patrons around. So it's one thing to get them in, we have to move them around. 
So the goal here is to identify several techniques to help get patients where they want or should go. So name three ways a bottleneck can arise. Hmm. All right. One, lost patrons. Next, confused patrons. Third, structural issue. Those are three examples. Several strategies to minimize the risk of crowds in open admission or general seating admission event could include the following. Encouraging people not to run. Appropriately directing patrons. This is where to go. Monitoring the rate of patrons entering an area. If too many people are using an escalator as an example, someone at the top could say, look it, we've got to slow down. Maybe talking with patrons to reduce their anxiety. This is why we're doing this. We're trying to make this event safe for you. So that's why I'm holding you back right now because there could be an issue on this escalator if too many people are using it. To help patrons get where they want to go, you can move groups of people together so they're not waiting for stragglers. Let's all go, folks. Here we go. Ask others to move as some patrons might not be moving based on others blocking them. You know, you guys are here, but you're blocking everyone behind you. Make sure patrons are not blocking exit ways. Make sure lines are moving well for concessions in the bathrooms. Make sure lines for concessions or bathrooms are not blocked by other patrons. These are all examples of steps you can take to help people move. So in conclusion, when we're trying to work on getting people into the venue, we're looking at the initial part of understanding what might be blockages for them. And these blockages can be stuff that you might have control over or things you don't have control over. If the, another team has lost a game and uh, the home team now has been eliminated from the playoffs, you might have people entering a venue who are upset from the very beginning. You might have people who are entering the venue who are possibly intoxicated. And you have to look at the policies and procedures of your venue because it could be that you have a policy that if someone shows sign of visible intoxication, what are you going to do? Are you going to tell them, look at you can't come into the venue? Well, is there a concern that they're now entering into the parking lot and are going to hang out there or maybe drive and they're showing signs of intoxication so they might be intoxicated? Those represent potential concerns that at least you have to be thinking about. And normally, if you have a concern about that, ask a supervisor. But you want to try to minimize any concerns when people are coming into the venue. That means appropriate signage. People know how to funnel. People know where they're going. Uh, some of the uh, strategies that are used are, if you've ever been to an amusement park where you have those lines that snake around, why is that done versus a funnel? It's to make it easier, to reduce flow issues, to release density issues. Because if you're going in a serpentine manner, that's often going to slow down the process, but prevent crowd crushing and things like that. So if there are strategies that are used, such as barricades or things like that, it's often for a reason. If you want to know, ask a supervisor. But the most important thing is, if there's a policy and procedure, make sure you follow it because they're there. They're there as a way not to just make your life difficult, but to make it safer for everybody else. So follow those policies and procedures. And if you see something that doesn't look right, say something. One of the biggest uh, success stories for a ticket taker, an entryway person, occurred in France, where there was someone who was set to a uh, terrorist, set to blow up an explosive device at a game, which was a nationally televised game at the National Stadium in Paris, France. And there was someone who was there on the job for their first week on the job. And they saw someone acting suspicious. They're wearing a heavy coat. It just didn't seem right. And so he denied entry. He saw the person try going to another area. And he warned the people there saying, I already told this guy no. They did not allow him to go into the venue. He blew himself up outside the venue. Think about how many lives were saved by that patron leader and what they did. They monitored, they saw something, they knew what the rules were, they knew what didn't look right, and they addressed it. That's what you need to do. Let's stay safe out there, everyone, and have a great day. Bye-bye.